So about a year ago, I made a stock broker tier list where I ranked the best stock brokerages, in my opinion, for investing. Now this video did really well. Most people loved it. Some people didn't like it. There were some comments uh, down in the description below where people sort of argued over what the best brokerages were. But overall, I think it was great because it started a conversation and I think we all learned a lot. Then 2020 happened. First the market crashed, then it went up like never before. And also the whole Robin Hood GameStop situation happened. And if you haven't heard of this, this was basically where a bunch of different brokerages blocked the ability to buy GameStop stock, which helped out the billionaire hedge fund managers and hurt the common everyday investor. And because of this, many people are now looking at which stockbrokers are trustworthy and which ones are full of it. Now, on top of that, there are other factors to consider, like what the fees are, how easy to use they are, how easy it is to integrate it with other types of financial products, like your bank account, for instance. So there are a lot of different categories to look at here, and that's exactly where we're gonna be doing in this video. So we're gonna be looking at all of the most common stockbrokers, looking at their strengths and their weaknesses, and then I'm going to be ranking them based off of my own personal experience. Now, almost all of the apps that I mentioned in this, I've either used myself or I have friends that have used them and they've let me kind of like go in and look at their features. And I've also done a ton of research on this video in general. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's jump right into it. So the first one on the list is going to be Ally Invest. And Ally is basically a company that is trying to be a full service solution. They've got an online bank account, but they're also breaking into the investment world as well. Now they've got a really good savings account along with their checking account. They also have a very large ATM network. And I have to say their investment app is very easy to use and user friendly. Overall, Ally is really good. I think they're one of the companies that's pretty close to kind of bringing it all together in the full picture. Um, they're still relatively new. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give them pretty high marks here. I'm gonna put them into A tier. A for almost S tier. Next on the list, we're gonna be talking about Charles Schwab. And this is one of the biggest brokerages in the entire world. On top of that, they've got brokerage accounts, checking accounts, credit cards, like pretty much anything you can ask for. Again, they're trying to be that all-in-one solution. Now, one thing they did is they started charging $0 commissions and they probably ended up losing money here, but it was kind of a long-term strategic play because what ended up happening is other companies' stocks dropped. Other companies tried to copy them and of course their stock price went down. One example of this would be TD Ameritrade, which they just bought. Now, on top of this, Charles Charles Schwab is well known, especially if you're an international traveler, at having one of the best bank accounts. And the reason for this is because they will cover all of your ATM charges, pretty much no questions asked. So if you're somebody who travels international all the time, Charles Schwab has probably the best bank account you can get. I'm kind of trying to stick with just brokerages here, but you do have to keep the whole picture in mind as well. Overall, without a doubt, Charles Schwab is S tier. S for steps ahead of the competition. Next on the list is going to be Chase Sapphire Banking. And this is a really great service, but uh, at least last time I checked, it's only available for people who have a significant amount of money in Chase's bank account. So you have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank account. And if you have that, they will give you access to Chase Sapphire Banking, but specifically Chase Sapphire Banking, the investment services, okay? So this is only for like your super bougie client right? Rich people, basically, or very close to being rich. So I've heard really good things about it. Obviously, I've never used it myself, but this one is going to go into B tier, B for bougie. E-Trade is next on the list, and this is another company that is going to offer not just the brokerage account, but you've got a checking account, a savings account that has really good rates, um, unlimited free ATM usage. Pretty good overall, just not as good as some of the other ones on the list. I'm gonna go ahead and put E-Trade into B tier. B for better luck next time. Next, we're gonna be talking about Fidelity. And this might be, maybe, really depends on your opinion, overall the best one on the entire list. So, you know, I've done these videos on, you know, the best credit cards, the, the best bank accounts, uh, the best brokerage accounts, the best investing apps. Like, I've done all of these videos and Fidelity is just constantly, all the time, they're on the top. They just offer really good services. I think they're the closest to combining all of the different services together to just have a one-stop shop solution for all of your financial needs. And so for that reason, Fidelity is definitely gonna go into S tier, S for superior. Next on the list, we're gonna be talking about interactive brokers. Now, generally speaking, people who use this platform are using it for like day trading or swing trading. I'm not personally a big fan of day trading. However, I did do a challenge that I posted on the channel where I tried day trading 
uh, for a week and things turned out really well. I think I just got lucky. It was kind of just like a roll of the dice sort of thing, but I checked out Interactive Brokers and they are excellent for day trading. I got to give them props there. So if you are into day trading, uh, swing trading, that sort of thing, Interactive Brokers is probably the best platform to, for you to use, in my opinion, at least from the research that I've done. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put them into B tier. B for but only around 3% of day traders make money and less than 1% of them make more than minimum wage. Yikes. All right, next on the list is going to be Lightspeed, another platform that's generally used for day trading. Again, not a big fan. Um, this is one of your better options, I guess, for day trading, but you know, I, I'm just not a big fan of it. So this is gonna go into D tier. D for debatable whether you're investing or gambling. Next one on the list is going to be Merrill Edge. And this is a company that has been doing really good lately. Uh, they're kind of in the same boat as Fidelity, Charles Schwab, where they're trying to kind of combine everything together. In my opinion, they're just not quite as good as these other ones. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put them into A tier, but they're kind of on the precipice of being in S tier. A for almost as good as the best ones. And I realize here, guys, I'm not really going into too much detail. The reason for that is because if I go into too much detail, the video is gonna be way too long, so I'm trying to keep this one short. But anyways, next on the list is going to be Option Express. And this one is specifically used for penny stock day trading, which is basically like the most risky version of day trading. Um, so I'm not a big fan of day trading and I'm even less of a fan of penny stocks, okay? So this one is gonna go straight into F tier. F for functionality. Next on the list, we're gonna be talking about Robinhood. Now this was the huge controversy of uh, early 2021 where Robinhood decided to stop people from being able to buy GameStop stock, which was a decision that ended up hurting normal investors and helping out hedge fund managers. So people were very, very angry about that. Now the truth is, when you really look at the details, it wasn't just Robinhood. They took the brunt of the blame, but there was a bunch of different companies that did this. And second, they did have some legitimate reasons for doing this, okay? But despite that fact, people are still really mad at them. And I haven't been super happy with some of the moves they've been making in general. You know, and from what I've seen, unless, you know, an update happens and, you know, that I didn't see, they don't offer retirement accounts. They don't offer mutual funds or bonds, anything like that. And that's just kind of unfortunate. I think they should offer some of these long term investing uh, strategies because that is, it's been shown time and time again that people are gonna get better returns if they invest long term. But you gotta give it to Robinhood. They were kind of the OGs. They started the zero fee or very close to zero fee trading that made it possible for average everyday investors to get started investing at a much younger age. And so overall, I think Robinhood is a net positive. There is some negatives there, like the way that they make money is a little bit sketchy if you look into it. But overall, it is a net positive. I'm gonna go ahead and put Robinhood into B tier. B for used to be best friends with Robinhood, but now my best friend is Weeble. Next on the list is going to be SoFi, and they are a company that is known for dealing with loans. So they will help you to consolidate and refinance your loans, specifically student loans, and that's what they're most known for, but they are trying to break into other parts of the finance world. They are somewhat limited at this point in what they offer, but it's pretty much like zero dollar fees, the commissions are low. I think they're doing a great job trying to break into finance. Um, it's just that they haven't been around for long enough for me to give them such a good score. So overall, I'm gonna go ahead and put SoFi into A tier. A for a challenger for S tier if they continue improving their product. All right, next on the list is going to be TD Ameritrade and they were just uh, acquired by Charles Schwab and uh, so it's really not even worth talking about them. They were really good for a long time. One thing that they had going for them is they had a lot of uh, physical locations where you can go in and actually talk to a live person, which some of these investing apps don't really offer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier, which A stands for all around good while they lasted. Next one on the list is going to be Trade Station and this is another one that is all about day trading. So we're talking about active trading. However, in my opinion, it is one of the best if you are going to day trade. Um, not quite as good as interactive brokers in my opinion, but it is one of the best ones. If you don't like interactive brokers, this is probably the one that you wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into C tier. C for 
confused about what they're doing because they offer so many different services and it doesn't really make sense. All right, so next on the list is going to be Vanguard. And Vanguard is probably the most trusted company on this entire list, if you ask me. And the reason for that is because they are basically the OGs of the index fund. And in my opinion, index fund investing is probably the best type of investing that you can do, at least if you're somebody who has like a like a medium level risk tolerance. So when it comes to Fidelity, Charles Schwab and Vanguard, it really just comes down to your own preference. But if what you care about the most is kind of reputation and trust, I would say that you should probably go with Vanguard. So it's not quite as good when it comes to technology and you know the app interface and the online interface, it's just not as good. But overall, when it comes to trust, they are number one. So that's why they're gonna go into S tier. S for straight up the most trusted brokerage. All right, so next on the list is Webull. And the reason that Webull was able to burst onto the scene in the last few years is because they basically saw all of the weaknesses of Robinhood that Robinhood wasn't fixing, and they basically filled in all of those gaps. So in my opinion, Webull is just a slightly better version of Robinhood. So in my opinion, Webull is more for beginners, just like Robinhood. It's slightly more difficult to use than Robinhood, just like, I don't know, 5% more difficult to use. However, it has a lot more functionality. There's just so much more that you can do with it. It has a super nice interface. It's just very ergonomic, easy to go around. I, I love using Webull. Anytime that I do some kind of challenge, like when I did my day trading challenge, for instance, I used Webull for it. And on top of that, they offer probably the best promotion in all of the finance world where you can get up to four free stocks. I think at this time it's valued up to $1,800, something ridiculous like that, just for starting an account and putting $100 into it. And you can see that down in the description below, I have a link to that. Doesn't get much better than that. I mean, that's like four free stocks. You could end up getting up to $1,800 just for signing up. This one is gonna go into S tier, S4, especially good for beginners. Next on the list is going to be You Invest by JP Morgan. This is one that didn't make it onto last year's list. People commented about it and so I looked into it. Now this one is relatively new. It's not really fully fleshed out or anything like that. They don't offer all of the functionality that some of the other brokerages do. Now this can be a good or a bad thing depending on what you're looking for. So if you're looking for something that's just super basic and super simple, kind of like for a beginner, this could be a good one for you. So overall, this is one to keep your eye on. I'm gonna be keeping my eye on it. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier. B for baby brokerage that could be really good in the future. All right, so next on the list is going to be Zach's Trade. And this is one that, again, kind of caters towards day trading and like penny stock trading, that sort of thing. Some argue that this is actually the best day trading platform. They swear by it. Uh, the commissions are gonna be a little bit higher than some of the other platforms. You also, I think you have to have at least $2,500 to start trading on here, which is again, a little bit higher than some of the other platforms. So if you're into day trading and you know the other two that I mentioned, Interactive Brokers and TradeStation, you're not into them, you should definitely give Zach's Trade a look. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into C tier. C for commissions are too damn high. Another comment that I was getting on my video that I did last year was I didn't offer any option for some of my viewers who are from Canada, Australia, uh, Great Britain, etc. So I did some research on these. Obviously I haven't used these, but some of my friends that I know online have used them and I did quite a bit of research and I, 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 you know, I haven't used them so I don't really wanna recommend them, but I just wanna mention a few that you can look into yourself. And so some of these would be Europe, eToro, Digero, Revolut, Canada, Quest Trade, Wealth Simple Trade, United Kingdom, Trading 212, heard great things about that one, Free Trade, great name, Australia, Stake and Self Wealth, okay? So look into those if you are one of my international viewers and uh, you know, always verify, make sure you look into it, see if it's really good. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, especially if you use some of these, I really wanna hear your feedback on these different apps and brokerages. And if you haven't done it already, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.